everyone, it's Cynthia Chandra. I'm coming live from my studio, Cynthia Chandra Art, um, near Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I'm getting ready to do some painting for you guys. I went live earlier on my Facebook page with um, this really gorgeous photo from A.R. Mason. And I am going to continue painting it now that it's dried a little bit. I can go ahead and start adding my background and some detail work. So I'm working in watercolor today. I usually do acrylics. I do large scale pieces a lot. And then I also do some smaller pieces with acrylics. Mainly do animals and nature scenes, but I'm always up for some commissions. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to turn the camera just on my art cam and I'm going to go ahead and get painting. Hey everyone. I grab my paintbrush. Say hi to everybody. So I have some phthalo blue, phthalo green over here, mixing with a little um, Viridian, get a nice green tone. Let me pull up my camera. I can see you guys, and I can see what you guys are seeing at the same time. So if you're just watching now, I um, I'd like to give you talk to you a little bit about what I do. I make a lot of different paintings for um, nature and wildlife, and all of my 10% of everything I make goes to um, different organizations that rescue animals or um, wildlife funds, trust funds. So this, um, the next few months, I'm gonna be donating to um, this fantastic organization that rescues dogs so that they can um, be trained as um, service animals. And when they train them as service animals, they find they find a vet, a veteran who um, has PTSD or somebody who's had traumatic brain injury, and they train the dog with them and their families. And then they actually pay for their health, their health bills for the rest of the dog's life and for food and medicine and such like that. So they're not just um, training them simply to give it to them. There's absolutely no cost to the vets, which is fantastic. I know a lot of, I've actually met a couple of people in my life who've come back from um, Afghanistan in particular that have had um, PTSD, and it's just so hard to re-enter society. Um, I can remember, especially like around 4th of July with the fireworks, one of my friends just had a horrible, horrible time with it, and he actually has a service dog now, not through them, but through a different company, and it just really has made such a difference in his life. He's able to join society again. He's able to... Um, go to large gatherings like that was that was really difficult for him and um he was a very sociable person before he left so it's a very difficult and tough journey to come back for a lot of these men and women so they just do amazing things and um there's a link in the um information for you guys if you want to check them out it's just Anything that we can do for these men and women is, is helpful. So you can donate for them. I think they have like, a, you can sponsor one of their dogs. You can buy one of my pieces of art. 
there's so many ways that you can um, help and every, every little bit helps. Absolutely, every little bit helps. Even $5 will help, <laughs> I'm sure. So right now I'm painting this background. Getting a little bit of color in here. Just using the watercolors. Very relaxing. I usually work in acrylics, but today I'm doing watercolor just to give myself a little bit of a break. Um, kind of take some, some time. This is always very almost meditative for me to work in watercolor, so it's pretty amazing how quickly you can paint with it too. Hi, Elaine. Thanks for joining us today. So I was really drawn to this image, not just for the way that the chipmunk is looking at the flowers, but I also really quite enjoyed the composition of the piece. I love um, the placement of the flowers and the, the way the chipmunk's body is. It just looks so cute. So I'm going to start doing these painting, um, painting nights every now and then. I think I'm going to do them later at night just because it's much more quiet. And I live in a, live near Pittsburgh, so I live in a neighborhood and there's always background noises, especially during the day. So it might be nice to just use this as a little bit of quiet and peaceful time for some people right before they go to bed. Um, I might even start doing this nightly for a little bit, just so you guys can see. Thank you for asking, Elaine. She said, how do you pick what you want to paint? And honestly, um, I do sometimes search for specific animals just because there's certain animals that call to me, like for the, the zebra, for instance. I um, searched for, through a lot of different zebra images and I wanted I wanted a zebra specifically um, because of their their nature of having stripes as a camouflage technique. I wanted it also to be honing on in on, even though they look similar, there's something unique about them. For this piece though, I, um, I'm actually in a photo group on Facebook that posts um, free reference images for artists. And this one just called to me just I love the composition of it, and I like the images, the, the painting. Um, I thought this would make a great painting because of the, the way that the flowers were and the way his face is. that little bit of a highlight in his eye. Just make his eye sparkle a little bit. into his ear, it's a little bit of a shadow here, kind of marks where his ear is. And a little bit more black. I 
I'm actually using a paint set that I bought when I lived in Japan. So the, the names of the paint is in English and it's also in Japanese, which I think is fun. I went to um, the art store it's down, the, down the street from where I lived and um, the man was so curious why I was there and was talking with me. He, um, he kept asking me all these different questions about what kind of art I did. And um, I really liked this one paintbrush that was beautiful, but it was it was very expensive, and because it, it was um, it was made it was handmade there, and I kept coming back and looking at it. And actually, toward the end of my time there, he must have noticed that I kept looking at it because he actually gifted it to me before I left. So it's very special to me. I'll never forget some of these incredible people you meet. Look at that little cheek. So watercolor is actually one of the more inexpensive forms of painting you can get into if you're interested in becoming a painter or even just dabbling a little bit. All that you really need is um, a few brushes to get started. I have a, I have a lot of brushes now as I've, I've become more, I started selling my art and um, become more trained in it. But to get started out, you really just need one or two brushes. They don't have to be anything fancy. You can get them at any store. And you just need some watercolor. And you need paper. <laughs> I'm using Bristol paper right, right now. I just, I like Bristol a lot because it's smooth. I can use it with lots of different media, mediums. But honestly, when I was starting out, I just used computer paper. You can use anything to get started and you don't even have to buy tubes of watercolor to get started you can even buy a crayola set it's all a matter of just exploring and and taking the, the leap of trying and even if you're not good at it sometimes it's just relaxing to see what happens with the colors you know One thing that I always try to remember is nature isn't perfect and actually the imperfections are what makes them beautiful. There's no straight lines in nature. Very sweet little face though. Okay, I'm gonna work on this tiny stripe going up to his ear. Look at that. Oh, such a sweet little face. Work on some of these stems now. Some nice bold lines. A lot of times, even if you're not confident in painting, if you just fake it till you make it, sometimes you just have to be bold with your strokes.
So I actually started um, trying to do these videos because one of my friends, Soma, encouraged me. She was hanging out with me um, or quarantine hanging out. So hanging out online. And she said, um, because I was working on a painting and she said, well, well, can I watch you? And I was like, sure, why not? And then um, she said, oh, you should try and do something like this on YouTube. I bet people would find this relaxing. So here I am. <laughs> this is my my second live on YouTube. My first one, I was just having fun and singing just to see how the camera would work and everything. Just experimenting a little bit. I think this is a nice nice way for people to see what others are doing, get some inspiration. It's hard these days when we can't see each other. There are some moments that are nice. It's nice to spend time with our family. It's nice to be home a little more. And it, it definitely is hard for a lot of people, especially people who are very social. I know it's been rough on my son and myself. Um, it's okay to feel sad sometimes about being at home or not being able to do the things that you enjoy. I hope that you and your family stay healthy and safe. You can find something that makes you excited to get up each morning. Maybe it's seeing beautiful creatures outside like this one, or maybe it's having that perfect cup of tea or coffee in the morning. Whatever it may be, I hope that you find something that gets you excited about starting the day. Okay, I'm going to get started on doing some detail work in these flowers, making the colors really pop in there. Make a little bit more. Some rows. And some permanent yellow deep hue. Some of these colors, some of this color in there. Look at that. That's beautiful. Look at how beautiful those colors are. Such a wonderful world that we live in, that's for sure. What is my most favorite painting ever? Um, so my, my favorite artist is Monet. And the first time I went to a museum, I actually went to the MoMA in New York City. And I had never been to a museum before. And I stood in front of Water Lilies by Monet. And I must have gotten lost in that painting for, I want to say, at least an hour or so. And it was just so beautiful, so many colors, so much life. The way that the light hit um, the water lilies, it was just incredible. He actually inspired me to be a painter just because of how beautiful it is. So I'd have to say probably water lilies by Monet. And then Elaine, you also asked um, what is my favorite brand of brushes. Um, so I don't really have a favorite brand of brushes. Right now I'm using um, Nick Pro brushes. Um, I seem to, these are really nice. Um, they come in lots of different sizes. I had, I think it's the 12, 12 piece set. I 
as far as paints go, I really like the Holbein, Holbein paints. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, for watercolors. And then I use Artist Loft a lot for my acrylics just because the color is very vibrant in them. And I seem to be able to get exactly what exactly what I want out of the coloring and they mix very well. So I have to recommend Artist Loft for acrylics and Holbein for um, watercolor. Usually when I look for a brush, I look for um, something that's smooth. Um, it's very dangerous for me to go into an arts and crafts store because I end up wanting to get all of the brushes. <laughs> but um, yeah, to get started, I would just get, um, let me see. I think I have one of my sets that I had originally gotten. Let me see here. You can just get like a simple, um, you can either get a horsehair brush or a um, synthetic brush. Synthetic brushes are nice because they're so smooth. Um, when you get into the hair brushes, you want to get something a little more high quality so it's um, more smooth. But I would recommend getting a size four. You can tell the numbers on the on the um, on the stem of the brush. So you can get like a size four. I would get a flat brush, which means it has a flat top and it's cinched here. And then I would get a size four round brush, which means it's rounded here and usually has a point. So this is just Pro Art. That's one of the cheaper brands you can get. Um, and this is probably my first set that I had. I had a four, a six, I had two, um, a four flat, a four round, a six flat, and a six round. And that's if you have that basic set, you can get most things done. Now these smaller brushes, because I do start, I did start working smaller recently. Um, they're one fourth, so they're a little bit smaller. I can get a little more detail. The numbers indicate how how wide the bristles are. Thank you for asking that question, Aline. And if you, if you guys want to start painting or you have any interest in it, even if it's just for hobby reasons, feel free to reach out to me. I'd be happy to, to set you up with, to help you figure out what you need. Or um, I also teach classes in person. I could teach a class of mine as well, just to help you get started. I'd be very happy to do that. If there's something in particular you'd love to see me paint, I'd also be glad to do that. You could even follow along with me.
some flowers in the distance here. Some splashes of color. This looks like a beautiful garden. It's a very friendly visitor. <laughs> Adding a little bit more of the stem work that's in the background here. Looks like some flowers that their petals have already dropped. It gives it a, a feel of some wild in there. It makes the image a lot less flat and more dynamic. Oh, that would be really fun, Melina. I'd love to paint that. Maybe I can paint that next time I come on. She said she liked to see a moon, with a crescent moon with an owl, maybe. That'd be beautiful. Just recently painted, let's see, okay, over here. Just recently painted a Great horned owl. Now this is not as, as peaceful, but just love how intense, intense he is. It's definitely telling you to back off though. <laughs> this is an eight by 10. It's a very fun piece. I love doing the feathers at the bottom. I don't know if you can see all that um, texture and movement. Very fun piece to paint. Yeah, a nice peaceful moon with an owl would be really neat. Go into this lavender back here. Get some of the stem work. Love the smell of lavender. As beautiful as this image is, I bet it would smell wonderful too. The roses and the lavender, the bachelor buttons. I'm going to get this texture of the lavender. There we go. Beautiful little petals. Some vibrant movement. They're sprouting up.
Painting's all about layering. Even if it feels like you painted doesn't, doesn't look quite right, sometimes if you just let it dry and come back and work on it, get that extra layer of texture or color and it just helps make it pop. I'm doing these fun, fun petals with bachelor buttons. And this looks like little hairs. <laughs> Fuzzy like the Lorax. back in and do another wash over top background here. Darken it up in a few places. Also subduing the stems a little bit to make the flowers really pop out front. Go over this one a little bit. Just a tad. Bring it back a layer. Really have us focus on this flower and this chipmunk up in the, in the foreground of our picture. Really make the lights and the ears of the chipmunk pop. And the weight on his belly pop. So there's some um, roses. Lane asked which flowers are in the painting. There's some roses, um, some lavender and bachelor buttons. There's actually, um, it's not in this image here, there's actually a vase with flowers in it. So the, the vase had some bachelor buttons and some lavender inside of it. Just wanted a little bit of extra color. And it looks like this little guy is checking out the flowers that are in the vase. So something must be, must smell good or look good to him. Okay, now I'm gonna get my white out. If I can find it. There it is. I work on some of these highlights, so I'm waiting for that background to dry. Get another small brush.
Just kind of loop around. The way that we make yellow stand out, see pink, mix it with a little white. I love the way the rose petals curl. So beautiful and delicate as they open up. Look at that, so pretty. It's a beautiful image. This one's also in the foreground here. So it gets right next to this, the little hands. Now roses spiral out. So whenever you paint a rose, you want to try and mimic that spiral pattern. One of my friends always says, there's so much geometry and perfection in nature through geometry. I love, I love watching how it develops and it grows when you're painting. It's so, so neat. That's why you never give up. Keep going, keep trying. It's not quite like what you like. Take a break and come back to it. You can make it however you like. Gonna mimic some of these forms back here, but I'm not gonna make it too detailed because I want to see that it's further back in space. But this general pattern will definitely help you to recognize the rows or even some succulents. Actually, there's a lot of succulents that are named, nickname roses, just because they follow that same pattern. I do have a small garden, <laughs> but I, I, I especially love my indoor plants. We, we rent, so we don't have a much space outside to have a larger garden, so. My passion right now is all of my, my tropical houseplants and flowers. Look at that, just gorgeous. 
I love the way that orange and that red play back and forth with each other. That's just beautiful. So it looks like it's a little bit wilted back there. Petals are just about to drop. Some beautiful budding roses further back. Just a wonderful image. I'm so thankful that A.R. Mason was able to, to capture this for us today. Just add a few more back here. No particular order, no particular place. It's kind of wherever I feel like. Adding a little splash of color. You know, I'm going to come in and add some more of this light into the chipmunk. Really separate it. And like this. Let's see where his neck comes in. Such a cute little animal. Precious little hands. So tiny. And his little belly. So if, you, if you've enjoyed watching this, you can go ahead and follow. I'm going to start posting a little bit more of these videos here. So you can follow me on YouTube. Click that red bell down there in the comment, right above the comments. You can see more of my posts. Some more cool animals support some of these fantastic groups that my husband and I started um, selling our artwork and we do a lot of research about which rescue groups are good to donate to and have helped many animals a lot of the money goes straight to the animals so you can see some of those fantastic groups Look at the sweet face. So cute. Every time I see one of these guys, I just, I stop and watch them. They're just so, the way that they move is so curious. <laughs> they always seem like they're on a mission to do something. They're never slow. <laughs> it's amazing that she, she or he was able to capture this photo, though. They're always on the go. Adding a little bit of texturing here. You can see that it's, it's fur is a little tucked up. It's inspecting things. Very sweet. A little bit more slight in here, make that stripe a little bit more prevalent in the back. You can really see that iconic chipmunk stripe, his racing stripe on his many adventures. Okay, so let's come right up in front of this flower so you can see the flowers behind him. Very sweet. 
Okay, I think I'm just about finished with this one. Probably come back in and do some more details tomorrow when I look at it. I'll post the finished product, the finished piece on my, um, my Facebook page. Some whiskers in here. <laughs> Curious little whiskers. Look at them. Oh, so cute. Looks like he has one that comes right, right past his eye. <laughs> Few little eyelashes. Very cute. So thank you guys so much for watching. And I hope I'll see you guys soon. Can we give you a little closer up? Let's see, can really see it. Me doing a live on my Facebook page of children's art um, Thursday at 10. And then I hopefully I'll be able to do some more of these late night arts with you guys soon. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful evening and art on everybody. Bye.